In this video, I'd like to talk about the graphs of rational functions. And remember that a rational function, notice it has the word ratio in it, a rational function is a ratio of two polynomial functions. So in simple terms, you can think of these as fraction functions. And to understand their graphs, we want to start by looking at the simplest types of rational functions. We have, again, this ratio of two polynomials, since constant terms are polynomials, and this is a polynomial of degree 1. And this would be one of the parent functions. And after we analyze this, we'll look at the graph of 1 over x squared and see if we can notice any patterns if we continue increasing the exponent in the denominator to maybe 3, 4, 5, or so on. So before we get into that, let's just focus on this simple one here, 1 over x. And in general, when looking at the graph of some new function or equation, what you want to do is start with a table. So that's how we'll determine any of the more advanced patterns that we might notice in these functions. So let me just make a table. And we're just going to look at some key values for x and see what their function values would be. Or, in other words, what the y values would be since the function and the y value, those will be the same thing. So let's look at some different positive values. We can look at 0, 1, 2, and 3. Though we'll also want to consider what happens when it's negative. So maybe minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. And as you'll see as we go through these, we will also need to look at some different x values as well just to complete the pattern. Now this first one, so let me first mark this is for x and y or our function value. So for this first one, notice if we plug in 0 to the equation, we get 1 divided by 0, which is not defined. So for an x value of 0, this function here is actually undefined. In fact, what we'll see as we go through this, this x equals 0 is what we call an asymptote. It's going to be a boundary layer where the function cannot cross through it. But we'll get to that as we go. Now if we plug in 1, we get 1 divided by 1, which is just 1. And if we plug in 2, we get 1 divided by 2, which is 0 0.5 or a half. And when we plug in 3, we get a third, which as a decimal is 0.3 repeating. Now plugging in the negative numbers, we get 1 over minus 1, which is just minus 1. When we plug in negative 2, we get minus a half. And at negative 3, we get minus 1 third. So let's quickly plot all of these numbers and see if we can find any kind of pattern. So for the positive numbers, we have 1, 1. We have 2, 1 half. And we have 3, 1 third. And then for the negative numbers, we have minus 1 minus 1 down here, we have minus 2 and minus a half, and minus 3 and minus 1 third. Now, it's very difficult to see a pattern just from these points. So, like I mentioned earlier, we will need to look at other points. We know that the function does not exist at 0, but what happens to the function when we look at values that are very close to 0? So maybe we could ask ourselves, what happens when we plug in 1 half? So there we'd have 1 divided by 1 half. And remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by that fraction flipped over, or that fraction's reciprocal. So at 1 half, it has a y value of 2, which we can plot right here. If we put in, let's say, 1 fourth, then it would be 1 divided by 1 fourth, if you follow this pattern, that would end up with 1 times 4 over 1. So when you plug in 1 fourth, that's just equal to 4. So at 1 fourth, let's say right about there, it's all the way up at 4. And what you'll notice, as you keep putting in smaller and smaller fractions, like let's say 1 over 100, so 1 divided by a hundredth, or you could ask yourself how many hundredths are there in 1, and there would be 100 of them. So that would be way up off the top of the screen there. But as you put in tinier and tinier x values, the y value gets bigger and bigger. 
So just to illustrate the point, if we put in, let's say, 1 over 10 to the 6th power, so this is 1 million if you write it all out, plugging this in, we'd have 1 divided by 1 over 10 to the 6th, or 1 divided by a millionth, and there are 1 million millionths in 1. So it seems as we get closer and closer to zero that this function is going to get bigger and bigger. In fact, the closer we get to zero, the closer the y value gets to infinity. So we can start drawing in this curve since you could continue this. If you plug in four, you're just going to get a fourth. So the curve will start getting closer and closer to the x-axis as the numbers get bigger since the fraction will get smaller and smaller. And like we mentioned, as the curve gets closer and closer to zero, it just gets bigger and bigger. So you can see we have a very rough picture of what it looks like, at least for the positive values. And the negative values are going to be very similar. For instance, if we put in, let's say, minus one half, then we get one over negative one half. And we know one over a half is just two, and then we're just going to take the opposite of that. So that will be negative two. In fact, for every one of these values, when we put in the opposite of it, then the y value will also be the opposite of that. So at minus 1 fourth, it'll be negative 4, and at minus 1 hundredth, it'll be negative 100, and so on. So let's plot those points. We have minus 1 half, that's down at negative 2. Minus 1 fourth will give us negative 4. And if we want to finish the graph over here, if we plug in negative 4, we just get minus 1 fourth. So it's basically this mirror image. You can imagine if we reflected it across a line right there, we get a mirror image on either side for each of these points. So after filling in the curve with the points we know, we can see that as x gets smaller and smaller or closer to 0 from the negative side, that the y value gets bigger and bigger in the negative direction. So as x gets very close to 0 from the left, the function, the y value, gets very close to negative infinity. And as the negative values get bigger and bigger, the function starts approaching 0 or approaching this x-axis from below. So this right here is our parent function for 1 over x, or essentially when the denominator has degree 1. And again, this function, this is the simplest rational function that we can make. And from this simple function, we can look at more advanced functions that are very similar to this. But we, before we get to those, let's look at another very simple rational function when we have 1 over x squared. 